it's official. I own an Emma coloured lipstick. I feel the need to strike poses. Hang on. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello creepy friends, welcome to Slams and Bobs and welcome back to a Thunderbirds Vintage episode special. It's been a while, hasn't it friends? I feel like it's been a very, very long time before we've done anything Thunderbirds, really since the series finished in about, what, January, February, early months? I really wanted to do this video a lot sooner, but this is essentially my tribute to the late and wonderful Sylvia Anderson. But I also feel the need to kind of sit here and have a talk with you guys before I crack into this because I came under fire by a few people for not doing this sooner. I wanted to do this sooner. As soon as the news broke out, I was on Twitter sharing my condolences, sharing how I felt. At the time, I wasn't well. Um, and it all kind of de developed from there because doing these videos, doing certainly the vintage episodes are a lot harder because you're talking about finding the episode to get and alright that's easy but then you'll sit there and watch it. That's 45 minutes, probably an hour really when you end up taking notes as well. Fast forward a little bit then you've got to film it which you know on a good day that will take 20 minutes. Editing a lot longer. There's only so many hours I have in my day before I go to work and the time before I go to work is the time when I make these videos. And unfortunately, what it works in is a system. So, you know, doing a box, a, a beauty box, 20 minutes, talking about any one of these nice new Alice in Wonderland Urban Decay lipsticks I have. A few minutes for anyone interested, I'm wearing Marana. Talking about the palette, another not very long time although you'd have to do the shadows on your arm for that so it's really not my intention to seem like a disrespectful fan by not doing this sooner but it's purely the time constraints and the fact that i only have so long and it's kind of hurtful when people do say nasty things obviously i have a thickish skin i have to have a thickish skin doing this i can't take every comment to heart that would be dumb for every person that likes me, there's going to be two more people out there telling me I'm a terrible person, that I can't do this, that I'm useless at this, and bring it on. I, I, can't, I can't compete with the big names, and I don't try to, but they also have all day. They are the sort of people that do this for a living, that have all day to sit there and record it and edit it and put it out on the same day. I don't. So please remember that, yes, I'm a fan. I loved Silver Anderson, I love Jerry Anderson, but there's only so long I have to do these videos and unfortunately when I'm ill, I mean I literally went from being sick to having a perforated eardrum and if you've not had one of those, it ain't nice. You can't hear, it's like walking around essentially like this and if you've never had it, you won't know what it's like but it's extremely distracting. I don't even like doing that because it reminds me of it. It's painful, I had to be on antibiotics that I was eventually allergic to. It was all medically stuff that just stopped me from doing the normal things. So please be patient with me. I've, you know, I've always done my best to get these out for everybody. You know, you guys have requested these. But please be patient with me and please don't judge me if I can't do it as quick as you'd like. I'm not happy that it's taken me this long to do the Sylvia Anderson video. Really, I'm not. But I only have so long. So please don't be mean to me. Sylvia Anderson passed away on March the 15th and it was a great shock I think for me especially when she just done Great Aunt Sylvia in uh, Thunderbirds Are Go which unfortunately was the least popular episode of the entire season but we shan't talk about that now. She was and still is the, one of the innovators of something that was so ahead of its time and still is ahead of its time even now in the newer series they're still creating and giving examples of things that are still ahead of its time i still can't get over watching episodes of telecalls and thinking you guys created skype in the 60s come on skype admit it you nick the idea from thunderbirds loves come on sylvia was an amazing lady and I get it's one of them people where you just thought to yourself, damn, I want to meet her. It was the same when Jerry passed. I sat there and went, no, because he was one of them people in life that I really blooming well wanted to meet. She was awesome. She was so talented. She helped create one of the most amazing TV, revolutionary TV series ever made. And God, 
I'm thinking of your family. I know it was nearly two months ago now, but I'm so sad you're gone. I hope you're doing okay out there. Or maybe you're making some kind of Heavenly Thunderbird series. Who knows? Either way, you were amazing. You did so much for the world and rest in peace. And my tribute for you is going to be The Man from MI5. There were a couple of episodes I thought of doing when the news of Sylvia's sad passing broke out, but the one that just sticks for me is The Man from MI5 because Lady Penelope is just a damn badass in that episode. I think she is so amazing in that episode and it was the one that I really wanted to do. I think there was another one. I think it was The Perils of Penelope I thought about but this one just really sticks to me. Or The Imposters, that was the other one, because Penny was quite prominent in that too. So the episode's open where you've got a guy on a boat sailing around, and then suddenly in come this, comes this guy who just shoots him multiple times and kills him on the spot. And at one point, he's shooting at the chair. You've got to love the real hand scenes, haven't you? Fumbling through the drawers and then holding the gun and, you know doing undoing the suit and then doing it back up and popping the little canister i love that i always love those real shots there's something about them that just tickles you down to the core no matter where they are so eventually this guy his name is carl we don't know that yet jumps off the boat and then comes down to a submarine and then sometime later poof, up goes the boat across from the way is another boat driving in with our guy from mi5 who, whose name is bonson and he just kind of looks and kind of doesn't care that his mate's just been blown up. He does seem very, very concerned about a certain set of papers, though. Bonson goes down and searches the wreckage of the ship, and, and it's quite odd that since it's been blown to smithereens, there's a lot of stuff in remarkably good shape, I have to say. I did notice that and thought it was quite funny. But the main thing that's concerning him is that this canister with these papers in has been taken. And that apparently is very, very dangerous to the entire planet. Uh-oh! So with nothing else to do, Bonson contacts IR via John in the satellite, which John then comes down to and tells Jeff. Now, initially, Jeff is kind of, as we expect him to be, well, we're a rescue organisation. We don't get involved with the police. We don't get involved in any of these operations. But when John says, well, it's kind of imperative to the world's survival, Jeff kind of has a change of heart. The mission ultimately is given to Lady Penelope, who calls Bonson from the car and puts on this amazing little accented Lady Penelope voice. So I've got to give Sylvia Anderson credit for that because that was cool. She put on, hello Parker, and then gave it an accent that I cannot do. I, I can't, I can kind of do how Lady Penelope would speak, yes Parker, but I can't then put another accent on top of it. No, Mr. Bot. No, I can't do it. I'm not even going to try. That would be wrong. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. It was so well sold and so well said. I, lo I love the way that she provides that accent over accent. It's brilliant. I also kind of raised the point of myself that Penny is a hell of a bossy lady in this scene. Keep your head forward. Don't look back. Don't look at me. Do what I say. And, you know, all right, we're in the future, but we're still being made in the 60s. A man taking orders from a woman like that? Way ahead of its time. So Bonson tells Penny about the papers and explains that they're really, really important and if they're not reclaimed, that, you know, it's going to be disastrous to the world. Penny takes all the information on board to reiterate back to Jeff, obviously, for the meeting. And at one point, Bonson tries to turn around and get shot at by Fab One. <laughs> the lady said, don't move. Gotta love Parker, haven't you? Never mess with Parker when it comes to Penelope in this series or the new because he will take you down. So we fast forward to Penelope being on her yacht and she is now gonna act as Gail Williams, hmm. a leading supermodel. Now I've gotta say, where do they get these leading supermodels from to suddenly just come in and go, oh, I'm a leading supermodel. Gail Williams wants to out the murderer. So that's therefore acting as the bait to encourage Carl to the top so that Penny can find out all the secrets and then they can reclaim the papers and yada yada yada. She's basically putting herself in harm's way, even though she's been told not to. And of course, Carl sees the news report, takes the bait. Can I just say, I would love to see Kate Middleton as a lady and a, du a duchess, whatever, a woman of, you know, current nobility, so to speak, take on all these disguises that Penny does and get away with it. 
it blows my mind that Penelope obviously is a lady, she's well known in the public eye, yet she just goes off and is several hundred thousand people at once and it's, I love that, I would love to see Kate Middleton do that, it would be hilarious. It won't ever happen, but I'd love to see it. So later that night Penelope excuses Parker because she's aware that Carl is going to be coming for her and she can't have Parker around, she needs to be on her own to lure him. After a fight, of course, because Parker tries to leave with a set of guns, which she eventually takes off him and has hidden all of his belongings so that Carl will never know that she has Parker anywhere near her. Parker goes to Monte Carlo gambling and we'll get to that at the end. Don't worry. Lady Penelope is such a legend in these scenes with Carl. She is fabulous. She doesn't flinch when she's abducted. Instead, she's fabulously sarcastic about it all. She relies on this absolute compliance and sarcasm. Oh, are you going to tie me up now? Oh, you do let me fix my face. It's amazing. She is fantastic. It is, it's almost comical to watch, but in a brilliant way. Because I just don't know what woman would have done that back, you know, in the 60s. Future-wise, set in the 60s. But, like, I don't know what woman would have done that. Most women back then would have been sort of seen to be going, oh, Don't kill me, please don't kill me. But not Penny. Not Penny. Carl abducts her and takes her from her yacht to a boathouse. Doesn't flinch, no fear throughout. And essentially Penelope basically encourages him to tell her everything she needs to know to get the papers back. So Carl essentially is a bit of a moron. We knew that from the fact that he's already killed someone. He tells her things like how they're in a sub, how he'll detonate the bomb that he's going to leave in the, in the boathouse when he's actually underwater. All these things, it's like, duh, don't tell her that. But of course, he doesn't know she's secretly in National Rescue. Yes! Which genius scripted Penelope here? Come on, someone give me a name. Which genius scripted Lady Penelope for those lines? For the whole scene. I'm sorry, I know I just mentioned it, but we're going back to it. Who scripted her? It was amazing! It's still amazing! It's still just brilliance. I love it. There are an awful lot of rats around here. Well, you do have to have some friends, don't you? <laughs> but may I fix my face before I die? It's in such a mess. Except when Penelope's fixing her face, she's actually not. Instead, she's taking her little compact and sending some sort of message to Jeff, like this, with her pat with her little buff, which I don't have, it's just a pot of powder, who somehow understands this makeup application sig distress signal. I don't know either. I need me some of those. Seriously, if I was ever in distress, I could just, like, get a little phone out and just, you know, quick little dab dab, help me now bomb, blah, blah, I, I don't know. It, eventually, the compact is knocked out of her hands, but it's still actually on. So Jeff and the whole of International Rescue have access to seeing a screen, but they can kind of hear, but very faintly. So they're still live and on a telecall. Jeff manages to work out Penny's location and that she's trapped on board a boat with a bomb and obviously dispatches International Rescue to help her. And knowing that there's a submarine involved because Penny has distressed that to them, they dispatch Scott, who says we're also going to need Thunderbird 4, so off go Gordon, Gordon, Virgil and Scott to go and save Penelope, but also to, but also to neutralise the bomb, otherwise Penny's going to blow, but they've also only got so long because eventually there's going to be a Coast Guard coming around as well, and they can't be seen to be doing that then. Not quite sure why that is, I'm kind of a bit confused about that one. Carl leaves Penny on her own, so Penny tries to talk to Jeff in the meantime, but she's not, she's too far away from the compact, so she has to wiggle herself forward, uh, which seems more of a stress than actually being abducted or having a gun pointed at you all evening. That seems, oh, this is very tiresome. Seems like physical activity kind of gets Penelope a bit too much. It's quite funny, really, isn't it, when Penelope's like rocking in the chair and then she sort of ends up like that with all hair on her face going, Oh, Jeff, at last. <laughs> it's really quite common. Let's see if I let's mess my hair up and do an impression of Penelope on her side. That's it. That's what she was doing whilst tied to a chair. Yes, uh, she was determined, though, wasn't she, to get there. <sighs> Scott arrives near enough to the danger scene and helps kind of give a vague location of the submarine. Still being against the patrol boat, they know exactly how long they've got. Meanwhile, Gordon is underwater finding their exact location. He then finds them, gasses them out, and while Scott rescues Penelope, goes aboard, neutralises the bomb, 
and takes back Bonson's papers. Yay! Mission accomplished! World saved! Yeah! Which ends the episode with Penelope bossing Bonson about again in a wood, telling him to keep still as she gives him back his papers, therefore saving the world. And we end up with a little hilarity at the end of the episode, with Parker revealing that he actually gambled away Penelope's yacht, which ends with a bit of a snarl from Lady Penelope. I love this episode purely because Penny is the heroine in this episode. She might be in a little bit of distress, but she is mainly and primarily the hero of the episode. She puts herself in danger despite being told not to. Vocally, she is brilliant. I love it. She's just amazing. And for me, it's, I think, definitely one of Sylvia and Penny's finest episodes for me. And that is the one I wanted to honour the great late Sylvia Anderson with. You know what, any time I don't watch these vintage episodes, I always feel like when I watch them, like I've had some sort of toy taken away from me or like I'm revisiting a friend or like I'm having some sort of withdrawal symptom. It's really weird. So I hope that, you know, although it was a bit belated and I'm very sorry about that, it's still here. It's never too late to do a tribute. When someone passes, you can do it the next day, you can do it the next month. As long as you're honouring that person, for me, doesn't matter when it's done. Again, I'm really sorry it's late, but thank you for being here and, you know, celebrating the life of Sylvia Anderson with me and remembering what an amazing talent and what an amazing contribution Sylvia Anderson made to this world. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it is down here. If you would like to leave any comments, please do tell me. If you would like to tell me anything at all, if you would like to nominate a next vintage episode, it is down here. I know a lot of you have been saying Attack of the Alligators. It's on the card, I think, for the next one, but hit me with any episode hit me with any episode bearing in mind i've done a few do search the playlist for them there is one there and i will see everybody again for another vintage episode hopefully not as long a wait this time or anything else i want to talk about bye everyone that's sylvia